welcome to another episode of Spotlight Sessions. My name is Ilan Fisher. I'm the host. And I also head up our nonprofit partnerships here at Accessibly. Today, I'm going to be speaking to a really interesting guest, Lauren Aston. She's the CEO and founder of HearthSpark Design. And HearthSpark Design really has a very interesting message and story why it's actually called HearthSpark Design. So I'm going to kind of let Lauren really introduce yourself and um, understand a little bit about HearthSpark Design, also about your story and really how we're having this conversation today. Absolutely. So I'm Lauren Atherton. I own HeartSpark Design. Um, we're based out of Denver, Colorado. And I always, I got my career started in advertising and small agencies, internal teams, all sorts of different um, creative enterprises, working with big clients, small clients. And um, roughly, let's say five years ago, I had emergency open heart surgery. <laughs> like no history of heart disease, nothing. And that kind of rocked my world into, um, you know, just trying to take care of myself more, really realizing a dream that I had to own an agency for nonprofits. So I went from working all hours of the day, all the time to really focusing on, you know, okay, what do I really want to be known for? And what am I really good at? Okay, I'm really good at design. So let's build a team around that and started this agency that works with nonprofit organizations and quite a few health organizations that we work with. Um, and so after my surgery, I was diagnosed with Lowy's Dietz syndrome. And so it's been quite a challenge to try to figure out how to run a business with a chronic illness and also serve nonprofits. So it's this really mesh of, um, you know, helping people really trying to bring, um, good design to the nonprofit space in the United States. Um, and that's where how I got introduced to Accessibility. And so just trying to make sure that all of our websites are accessible. Um, and especially with a few health scares in my books, <laughs> you know, making sure that um, we make that, the web accessible for all. Thank, thank you, Lauren. And for people who don't know about Louis Steed syndrome and, and I myself am just at the beginning of my journey of learning about it, what is it and kind of how, how has your journey been been with it navigating? Yeah, um, so Lowy Dietz syndrome is a connective tissue disorder, and so it presents most frequently um, with heart uh, aneurysms. So it's really like, and I'm still learning it myself. I've only been diagnosed for five years, and I feel like I'm always learning something new. Um, it's closely related to Marfan syndrome. So if you're aware of Mar Marfan syndrome. Lois Dietz is like a cousin of that um, mm -hmm. condition. Um, and in a wild turn of events, so with my first open heart surgery, had no, and the only way that you discover that you have it is through genetic testing. And it, or if you have an emergency event, or if there's like symptoms and signs, you know, that maybe your parents are aware of or your doctor's aware of. So it's not very well known. Um, and it's just starting to get more and more traction. Um, but with my open heart surgery being emergency, I was told afterward that I had a one in 3% chance of living wow. after open heart surgery. Because essentially the walls of my aorta had weakened and then there was blood leaking through. I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty, but, <laughs> but there was you know, a leak in my heart. And that was what um, I mean, most people who have Lois Dietz and don't know it die before they're 28 because you don't get scanned, you don't get checked, you're just living life. And then a major event happens and you don't really think much about it. Um, so yeah, really wild. And, and in terms of heart spark design, there's obviously imagery and, and, and the name there, but what kind of drifted you towards your passion of creating websites or designing websites for, for nonprofits? Yeah, so I, funny enough, I was circling and circling a name and trying to find the right name for the business. And I worked with another agency because I'm like, I just need a second opinion. They presented the name HeartSpark and I was like, this is it. That's perfectly it. You know, and they just like hit the nail on the head. Um, Polywog out of Minnesota. I'll do a shameless plug for them. Um, but yeah, just realizing that your life, you want to do more with your life than just sell pizza or in ad world, sell shoes and these different things, you know. And so I really wanted to leave a legacy that was beyond me and beyond, um, you know, just selling things. And I really saw the value that creativity had for the for-profit world 
And I'm like, why are nonprofits not taking advantage of this? They could do so much more, um, you know, good if they just had good design, good branding, not saying it's like the coolest, you know, websites in the world, but just functional. And a lot of nonprofits don't have that. And, and very, very interesting that you mentioned that a lot of nonprofits don't necessarily have the resources or the right design or branding. But is there something that, you know, the business world is getting, um, I don't, I don't want to say wrong, but could be doing better when it comes to people with disabilities or, you know, engaging with the nonprofit world? Yeah, I think a bit of both. I think really aligning on your values. So like if a business has, I think about um, Bombas or even like Tom's with a vision and then connecting that with like, okay, what does vision mean overall? And I think accessibility is a huge part of that and making sure that people maybe who don't have vision or prone to seizures or different, you know, conditions that people deal with, um, tapping into that audience and making sure that you're accessible, your website at the very least is accessible, but that your brand is also accessible, easy to read, clear type, you know, fonts, things like that. So I can nerd out on that all day, <laughs> but yes. And, and, and I love that. And is in the past five years, has that this really accelerated your journey about accessibility or is accessibility always something that, that you were looking at? Yeah, I honestly, I wasn't. And I was just kind of like, okay, we'll just make functional websites for nonprofits. But then once you're presented with a community of people, my community and Lloyd Seed Syndrome, that they have a lot of limitations and a lot of, I wouldn't say disabilities, but maybe, um, you know, just limitations with sight, with, you know, motor skills, functionality, things like that, that it just makes you that much more empathetic and just like, Gosh, yeah, thinking about it a different way. I actually had an interesting thing happen to me a couple weeks ago where I lost vision in my right eye. And I was like, that's weird. That's new, you know? And so you're kind of always, at least in the past five years for me, kind of at not at odds with your body, but just like, okay, I have this condition. What does that mean? And you're just paying more attention to okay, what does it need? What do, like, what do I need compared to just going and going and going like I was doing in the ad world? <laughs> and and I'm, I'm really interested to see kind of also, you said, you mentioned that you, you didn't work so much on accessibility prior and, that, and now you are like kind of, what is your definition of accessibility or access? Because you mentioned also like writing clearly and clear fonts, but I think it's also a lot more of kind of having your brand out there. So I'd be I'll be super interested to hear kind of what your take is on that. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I think it's, it's like looking at something from someone else's perspective and not just assuming something about someone. And I think that's a big thing that we're all learning about each other is like, oh, I shouldn't just assume something about you. You shouldn't assume, you know, and so really trying to, um, just think through, okay, if I make this look really cool, but it's really hard to use, like, what's the point of that? So it kind of makes function come over form and then, you know, ask people to try it or, you know, I feel like it just opens a conversation. So accessibility to me is just empathy in like a practical form. I, I love that. And I also like, as well as a practical form, it's also just a mindset of really including people in the conversation when you're in the design processes all the way to the implementation. And, and Lauren, I wanted to kind of, you mentioned that Hotspot Design started in 2020. What are some of the goals in 2022 and beyond? In, on, on just, not just your business, but also, um, the, I get to say, I, I mispronounce every time, the Louis oh, Dietz okay. Foundation as well. Yeah, Louis Dietz Syndrome Foundation. I know it's a mouthful, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Um, I mean, really, with uh, I'll start with the foundation. So with the Lloyd Seed Center Foundation, it's really our awareness month is coming up in June. And so really, that's a whole month we take to just help spread awareness, bring more, just help people become aware that this is a thing. And if you see these certain signs, you know, um, signs that I saw, my parents saw when I was growing up, but they're minor. And but then when you put them all together, it's like, okay, yeah, that could be something, you know more serious. So bringing awareness, we always are about building community and making sure that people know that they're not alone, um, especially when you just realize that you've been diagnosed with a chronic condition or 
you know, a genetic condition, it's really scary. And so just trying to make sure people know they're not alone. And then um, educating. So doctors, therapists, going through all of the gamut, making sure people have the support that they need. So that's the goals for the foundation for this year, which we'll continue doing <laughs> every year. Um, and you can check out the foundation at loisdeets.org. Um, and then for HeartSpark, it's really, I just had my second open heart surgery last March. So I feel like we're finally getting like a little bit of uninterrupted momentum to just keep moving forward and keep, you know, trying to help more and more nonprofits. And my goal for this year is to get all of our nonprofits that we built previous websites accessible because now I'm like, oh my gosh, we need this. <laughs> And so, um, yeah, just kind of putting that lens on past work and making sure that everything is up to standard. And and thank and thank you so much for for sharing that. And really, I I wish you all the success. I have no I've no doubt you're going to reach the the goals. And just my last question is: if people listening to this, either a nonprofit that's looking to you know scale up their branding or design, or somebody looking to get more involved in the foundation, um, how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, heartsparkdesign.com. And or you can uh, email me directly at lauren at heartsparkdesign.com. Awesome. Lauren, I just wanted to thank you so much for really giving your perspective. I love when really people are always meshing the business world and the nonprofit world. I think it's super, super important and your lens on accessibility has been really valuable. So I hope the listeners Sweet. take something from this episode and I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I've had a, a fortune from Sheldon. Yep. <laughs>